surprise, it's me again, Volker Butzig, and um, I'm happy to queue in the second session of this year's UI5Con, um, a topic where I have personally a very big interest in. It's about UI5 scaffolding. Um, the person or the man doing the session needs a few to little introduction. It's Majos Obert, development, development advocate at SAP, um, known to many of you. So, Majos, without further ado, the stage is yours. Thank you, Volker. Hi, Sarah. Greetings from Munich, which is insanely hot today. I, I'm sure it's the same all over in Germany, probably all over in Europe currently. Volker already said it. I'm Marius. I'm a developer advocate at SAP. And in that role, I cover the topics of uh, cloud native development in SAP BTP and web application development. So it perfectly fits in the scheme of the UI5Con here today. Um, as a developer advocate, I create a lot of content, especially during these pandemic times. So you might have seen a blog post, a video on YouTube of me, code samples on GitHub, or you might know me from ECUF5, which is also the topic of this talk here today. So let's dive right in. And this is the agenda that we'll cover today. First, I will give you a brief introduction to what ECUF5 is, if you don't know it yet. And then I will also cover the foundation. So even if you know ECUI 5 from using it, you may might not know how it works under the hood. And this is what I'll cover in the second uh, agenda item here. The third one is a, a short spoiler now. We split up the code base into different projects that are all open source and they are all on GitHub. So I will explain you which product, which project you can find where and why it's somewhere else as the other project. And then last but not least, we come to the secret sauce of this talk here today. I will show you how you can extend EasyUI 5 yourself. Same as what Peter did, what you saw like one hour ago in the keynote to create a TypeScript UI 5 project, for example. All right, so let's uh, start with the intro slide here. You might notice blog post introduction to the ECUI 5 generator. This is a post that I've written like in February of 2019 when I released the initial version of ECUI 5. And back then the main purpose of the tool was that it makes it super easy to create UI 5 projects that can be deployed to multiple target platforms and they already apply the current best practices and they come with the most recent versions of the dependencies. Because back then, uh, it was before we had the business application studio. And back then, also the SAP UI 5 resources were not available on NPM. Only the open UI 5 resources were available back then. So it was always possible to do a local development in your favorite IDE. But you always had to set up the project from the scratch. And so it means copying all these files from a sample project that you found on GitHub, for example, or copying them over from existing projects or downloading them from a new project that you generated with the web IDE back then. But I thought all these options are kind of tedious because they require a lot of manual work. They are error prone because you might have to change the name or IDs or the namespace of the application. And you have to make sure that you update best practices that you might not have updated in the application where you copied it from but you definitely want to update them for a new project that you start from the scratch. And I was looking around and I couldn't find a real solution to the problem. There were some generators before, obviously I was not the first one who came up with that idea, but all the generators that I found were a little bit different from what I wanted to do. So either they were outdated, so they had a good idea, but they weren't maintained, maintained actively or they had a too narrow focus on, for example, deployment to the gateway system or to an other platform, but not to B2P or the other way around. And I want to have like all ways. So my idea was let's build one generator that can do everything and will be maintained, even though it's not an official product from SAP, it's just an open source project that anyone can contribute whenever he or she has time. So that was the idea, but I, you know, it, an idea is not enough. So there's always this risk that you start a project, you maintain it for a week or a month, people start using it, and then you don't have time for, you don't find time for that. 
and the project just becomes outdated. And that's why I also added this XKCD here. You probably all know it. And this was really a risk that I was aware, but I was just hoping that uh, everything will turn out well. And luckily, everything turned out well. So um, this is a screenshot of the very first version of ECUI5 and how you executed it. So you just executed this yo command. I will mention more about that in a few minutes. And then you say easy UI5. And once you installed your tool, uh, the tools before, the prompting phase will start. And it will ask you, what type of a project do you want to generate? Is it like an open UI5 or an SAP UI5 project? Do you want to pull the libraries from the CDN? What's the name of the project? And once you answer all these questions, it will magically create all, uh, like dozens, maybe 20 files for you. And when the file creation is done, it will also execute npm install to download all the dependencies. So the files that are created are rather small, and then the dependencies are downloaded straight from npm. So they are not part of the library or so. And uh, once that's done, you can execute npm start, and ta-da, there is your SAP UI 5 application. It's a plain, simple application, just an application with a page that has a title, and that's it. There, and this is really the simplicity of Easy UI 5. There are a couple of sub generators that you could use, for example, when you want to add a, a new view, or let's say you want to add a model or a new controller. So, uh, new files or manipulate files that are already there. This also came with ECUI5 with the so-called sub-generators, but I would say overall the scope was very shallow. It didn't, I didn't want to go too, too deep because also I wasn't sure what would be useful to the community and I didn't want to spend a lot of time for something that might not be used or that might even confuse users and they just want to have the simple stuff. So I put it out there. I was hoping oh, hopefully it will be helpful to some other developers out there. And then I got the first contribution, I think within one week. It was from a colleague at SAP, Matthias Oswald. And he just had a very good recommendation that he said, oh, by the way, here in line 23 or so, uh, you don't follow current best practice. Let me show you how it looks better. And that was the first contribution. And then many more followed after that. So for example, there were contributions where someone said, oh, it's actually a cool idea that you could add uh, JSON models but why can't you add an OData v2 or v4 model? And then that person opened a pull request, I merged it, and now it's a feature available in ECUI5. Something similar goes for the component usage, for example, and for many of these sub-generators, but also larger contributions were made, for example, for uh, testing frameworks that I wasn't very familiar with, for example. So, for, sorry, Volker, you made a pull request for your VDI5 generator, for example. And other uh, SAP colleagues made pull requests for uh, UI Verify, for example. And it was really cool to see not only how the ECUI5 project grew, but also how the, the usage grew among other uh, yeah, developers in the SAP ecosystem. So on npm.com, you can really see how month by month more people use this generator. And that was really not the end. But I have to say, I was also a little bit concerned about um, what changed when, oh, what happened when the code base grew. And I wasn't super familiar with the code because for once, uh, that means that whenever something is broken with that new part that I didn't write, I depended on the contributor of the original pull request to be there and to fix it. And on the other side, I wasn't sure if this tool was still like super easy to use for someone who only wants to have this plain application and who doesn't care about testing because maybe they do their first steps in UI5 and they want to have an as easy as possible start. Similar as what, for example, is possible with create React app. There's only one command and then it's there. So there's no configuration. So it's a it was a unclear to me which line I want to follow and where this project should go. And I didn't like waste too much time with thinking about it because I thought wherever it goes, I think I will figure it out along the way. And then earlier this year, Gert Jan 
uh, opened an issue and asked, it's super cool that you have uh, this generator to create web application projects, but how about a generator to create UI5 libraries that could then be used by web application projects? And I thought, yeah, that totally makes sense. And Gerd also offered to uh, make open a pull request that adds a feature to ECUI5. But then I was wondering, does that make sense to have like one generator for projects or for web applications as well as for libraries? And around that time, I also had like a casual talk with Peter and he also had that idea or he had an idea that went in the same direction. Why don't we make ECUI5 the overall shell that people execute, but they can use it to create any type of project in the UI5 ecosystem. For example, a web application, a new control, a library, a TypeScript project, or whatever. And so I really liked the idea, and Peter and I met a few times, and then we started to do some coding sessions to create a POC, and then to refine the POC, to iterate over it. And obviously, Volker, you were also part of that discussion. I don't want to <laughs> cut you out of the story here, right? And then a few weeks later, we came up with EasyUI 5 version 3. Obviously, there was version 2 as well, but it's not that relevant for the story. So I skipped that part that here. And um, EasyUI 5 version 3 has the same starting point. So you enter yo EasyUI 5. And then before you actually get the first question, to specify your project, you actually get asked, what kind of a project do you want to generate? So do you want to create a new web application project? Do you want to create a new control? Do you want to create a new library? And uh, like until yesterday, these were the only three options that you had. If you watched the keynote one and a half hours ago, you notice that there is a fourth option now to create a TypeScript project. And actually there could be any number of uh, of, uh, of plugins that you could choose from, but more on that later. So if you wanna say, let's create a new web application, you can just hit enter to say uh, generator UI5 project, or as you see that below in the screenshot, you just type in yo easy UI5 project, and then you basically skip the first step because you provided the information in the starting command. And then, it's more or less the same questions that you get in question uh, in version one of this tool. So it asks you where the libraries should be coming from, what's the ID of the project, what's the namespace of the project, what type of view do you want to use, and then fi the files are being generated, npm install is being executed, and if you, for example, select the SAP Launchpad service as a target system, then your web app is automatically embedded in the FLP sandbox here, or when you deploy it to SAP BTP, you can directly connect it to a productive, a productive launchpad service. And that makes it really easy. And also what you see here, the core idea still stay the same. So the application that you generate is still just an empty application with a page that has no content and just a title. And this is something that I want to keep for a long time because I was a little bit concerned that when I start, uh, for example, adding more complex UI templates here, like a column, a flex column layout or a master detail page, or maybe a freestyle list report, that it will be really hard to maintain this because then I cannot just increase the version number when there's a new version of UI5 out there, but I also have to make sure that the application itself is still working. So I push that back, people ask me about it in the GitHub repository, which is fine, but I said, mm, I'm not sure if that's actually the right way because it could be too complex for me to maintain. But now that this is an open architecture where anyone could add a new plugin for ECUI 5, it would be easier for uh, members of the community, for example, to fork the UI 5 project generator or plugin and extend it themselves and add it to the UI5 community. And then it would also be available in ECUI5. Um, one word about the growth rate of the project, which I think is really incredible. And I, it's far from what I was expecting back then when I developed it in 2019 or 2018 when I started. 
that in the first year, as you can see here, I got something between two and 3,000 downloads per year, which was perfect. This was actually all that I was expecting. And then in the following year, with all these com contributions from the community, there were almost 15,000 downloads, which was like mind blowing. And now this year, even though we didn't even finish half of the year, we already passed that number with this easy UI, UI 5 version three. So there is still a lot of growth potential for this open source project, which is really cool actually. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about the foundation, what enables easy UI 5. And it's itself is an open source project that's built on many other open source projects. Most of all, your man, but that project obviously depends on other open source projects as well. And you have this like basically, yeah, the house of blocks here that basically stabilize ECUI5. And there's obviously always this one guy from Nebraska who thanklessly maintains a repo that no one knows about, but everyone uses it. And I thought this is like a, would be a great uh, yeah, opportunity to appreciate that guy from Nebraska and say thank, thank you. And uh, I already said it that here is this uh, human generator, which is the main dependency of ECUI5, and it enables you to kickstart new projects, to prescribe best practices, and to provide tools that help developers to be more productive. And it does it with different uh, like APIs. The, but for the consumer, it always starts with this yo command. So if you say yo ECUI5, that means or yo Fiori project or Fiori tools, that means that all these generators leverage the human framework. And the framework provides uh, an easy uh, way to declare user interactions. So that is, this is the prompting phase. In the beginning, that for example asks, uh, what type of a view do you want to use for the project? It uh, offers file operations that help you to copy files from the template folder to the folder where the user actually wants to create a new project and also to manipulate those files during the copy operation, for example, to replace placeholders. And it covers topics like dependency management and unit tests to make sure that your generator works all the time. And actually the first, first four points here were the points that I used for version since version one of ECUI 5. The third point, integration with other tools, actually I didn't use that much up to version three. But now since version three has that code split, ECUI 5 itself became very small. It's basically just a, a generator that asks one question, what type of a project do you wanna generate? And then when you answer that question, for example, you say, I wanna create a new UI 5 library, then it downloads uh, this plugin from GitHub and executes it right away. So the user doesn't know that a different uh, yeah, template has been downloaded and executed and it's all seamlessly seamless and that makes it very easy to extend ECUI 5 and to contribute uh, plugins to it. So um, I already mentioned it before, we did a code split, there are different projects now. So there is this main ECUI 5 project that has 500 lines of code. So it's a really small project that is in the GitHub organization of SAP. And then there is this UI5 project, which is in the GitHub organization that Peter mentioned earlier in his keynote, um, UI5 community. So this repository is maintained by the community and uh, it basically contains the same templating logic that has been in easy UI5 prior to version three. And then there's also the other project that I mentioned previously to create new UI5 libraries by Gert Jan. There's UI5 control from Volker, and it's not in the list, but there's now this UI5 TypeScript app from Peter, and there could be any other library provided by you or plugin provided by you. So if you have an idea, now you can get started and implementing it, no matter if it's, as I suggested, the a more complex template that has a more content than an empty UI5 app, or maybe, yeah, uh, extension, middleware extensions for the UI5 tooling. Everything that comes to your mind and is related to UI5 development could be embedded as a, a plugin generator here. 
And with that, let's come to the fun part. I will show you how you can build such a plugin generator. And for that, I need to share my screen. So one second. So let's switch over here to, to the browser first. So here you see this project that I mentioned before that contains the logic of the templating that was part of ECUF5 since the beginning, how to create a new web application. And it lives in this UF5 community GitHub organization. And then I wrote a blog post that you will also find in the slides later on that basically explains how ECUI5 grew over time with community contributions to community plugins. And when you scroll down in the blog post, you will find a section, how to build a plugin for ECUI5. And it's a relatively short section, so it's not, uh, not hard to do. So all you need is basically, a, you need to write a human generator and that generator has to meet one condition. It has to be made, uh, um, yeah, it has to follow this name pattern here, generator UI5 dash whatever. And it has to be hosted in this GitHub organization, UI5 community. So let's do that. Okay, so here you see that I'm logged in and I can create a new repo. You might not be able to create a repo, but if you have an idea, reach out to Volker, Peter or me and we'll make sure that you have access to this organization. Let's say generator uh, UF5, UF5 con, make, let's make it public and create it. And while it's creating, let's switch over to this, uh, to this web resource of Human. And here it basically shows you everything that you need to know to create a generator. So I will do a short demo for you, but don't worry if, you, if that's too fast or if it doesn't contain all the information that you're looking for, this web resource here has everything. And as you might expect, how do you get started to build a generator? Well, you could use a generator to create a generator. And that is this generator generator, which I think has a funny name. <laughs> so to do that, let's uh, switch over to VS Code. I have this empty folder here. And now I can just say, yo, generator to kick everything off. It might take a moment or two, but then you will see here, uh, it will ask me, how do you want to name this generator? And obviously I need to, or I should pick the same name as I did for the uh, repository on GitHub. So let's call it generator UI5, UI5con. And when I hit enter, you'll notice that it does a strange change to my string because of the kebab casing. So it adds a dash in front and at the end of the number, but that is not bad. So we can replace that later on. And um, for the rest, I just take the default values. It doesn't matter much what uh, data you provide here. So you see, that it's currently, uh, it created all the files. And now I can go in here and undo this uh, case changes or these uh, additional dashes that were added, but that I don't want that. So I renamed the file of the, the name of the folder. I need renamed the package.json. And I renamed this in the generators folder, you find all generators. There could be multiple ones, but the default generator always has the name app. And the logic of that generator is in the index.js file in there. And in here, you also find that string again that you can replace. So with that, uh, I 
think I'm more or less ready. So you see the generator here extends the class generator. It has a prompting phase that welcomes the user, asks one prompt, saves the results of the prompt in the props property. And in the writing phase, it basically copies the dummy file text to the destination file text. And that part in the end, actually, we don't need any longer. So let me here uh, switch in the, uh, in the directory of the generator, call this NCU. This is node check update to make sure that actually generator uses the most recent uh, dependencies. And then I can just call npm install to install the updated dependencies. And while it's installing, let me uh, make a small modification to this uh, dummy file because currently the dummy file here is empty. Let's add a string to create someone in there. Oh, and this will also make use of this uh, replacement or templating engine that comes with, uh, with human. And in order to, um, to use this templating engine, we have to ask the user a prompt to provide this value. So with that, I can do with this uh, line of code here. And then down here, when I actually write the file, I have to replace this copy function with copy template and pass in the properties object that actually contains this greedy uh, function then. And I think I need to do one more, add one more line, one second. Let me find it here in the project that I prepared. I think it's just... This line here. I'm sorry, my machine is <laughs> really slow right now. I guess my MacBook suffers from the heat, same as I do. <laughs> so, and then everything should be ready. And here I can invoke this generator to invoke it. I just call yo, and then I pass in the path to this default generator that lives in the app folder and I execute it. And then it asks me, who do you want to create? I say, Marius. Okay, here. Oh, obviously, I, I missed the beginning slash in the path. Let's do it again. Let's try it again, create Marius. And now you see there is this dummy file here and it says, hello, Marius, which is already great. But obviously this is just a simple text file. This is not a UI5 project. So let's bring this to the next level and let's um, replace the text file actually with a simple UI5 application. So in here, I renamed a file from dummy text to index.html and copy this value in here. And here you see this is a, a very small UI5 app all in defined in one file. It has the UI5 bootstrapping here, an application with a page and in the title, I create the user 
and then it contains an illustrated message. So let's save that. Obviously, the, this file cannot run by its own. So you need a server that exposes this file. And this server, in my case here, will be an app router that we all know from regular SAP BTP development. Here is the name UI5Con, dependency SAP app router, and basically just starts the app router. And to start the app router and to expose the static file, we also need the app router configuration, aka the access app.json file. And now, since we added other files to the repo, we also um, need to change this part here because obviously this dummy file does not exist anymore. And this can be done with the following short snippet where we basically use a glob expression. Oh, you don't see it yet, one second. This glob expression that basically takes all files that it finds in the templates folder and profile, it basically just uh, copies them over and it applies the template. Obviously, glob is not yet defined, so we have to go up here and say glob require glob. And I think then we should be all good. Let's try it again to execute this generator one more time. It will ask me again for this. Uh, the placeholder, let's say this time keep the default value UI5Con. It created all three files for me. And on top, it executes npm install. So that means it downloads the app router right in this moment. And once it's done, I can execute npm start. And it will basically start a web server for me running on port 5000. So if I refresh now, I was maybe too fast. The second time it works and you see, hello, UI5Con. This is a basic SAP UI5 or open UI5 application with a page, a title, and an illustrated message in the page content. Okay, so let me have a short look at the time so I know how we're doing there on this side. Uh, okay. I think we have enough time to also to do something a little bit more complicated. So um, let's upload it to GitHub to actually use it live, that we don't execute it locally, but that we use it via ECUI5. So to do that, I um, have to copy that part here. In the repo I do, or in this, uh, plugin generator, I do a git init. Let's add just everything. It doesn't matter if there's no git ignore there yet. Yeah, should be, doesn't, should doesn't be uh, okay. Let's also commit everything with the init message. Let's get, check out, um, let's call the master branch main so that we can push it to GitHub. And oh, now that I think of it, there's one more detail that is actually worth noting that you could do to uh, adapt this generator specifically for ECUI5. So here in the index.js, you can add a static property that will be displayed in ECUI5 to actually show what generator it is and what it does. So here we just call it demo showcase. And let's say as ECUI5 already creates the user, let's not create the user when it's uh, when the generator is called in the embedded mode. So when you call it standalone, it's still creating the user, but when ECUI5 calls this generator, it shouldn't create the user. Let's uh, 
also make this change. Let's say uh, adapt. This is a very, very good git commit message. Uh, git commit, oh, it was one M too much. Let's push it again. And now that it's pushing it, let's check online if all the commits are in the Git repository. Okay, so you see my last commit adapt is also in here. So that means now it's time to run ECUI5 locally so that it downloads the report uh, the generator that I've just implemented here again from GitHub. So basically that means you could do the same thing in a code along right now. So I really hope this works. Let's do everything in a new directory called yo easy UI5. Here we should see five. We have five suggestions now. New project, new library, new control, new TypeScript app, and this plugin that we've just written here a few moments ago. Okay, and perfect here, do you see it? It's already there, let's execute it. You see it downloads the resources now from the Git repository. Uh, once it's, it has downloaded the resources, it will uh, install them, then it will execute them. But you as a user, you don't notice it, except of that you have to wait, which is kind of slow here right now because I'm doing a lot on this machine, but it should be very fast when you do it. Um, let's have a look at the time. That's actually okay. So let's, while it's working here, oh, uh, let's go through the last slides. Oh, no, let's do this first. Let's say this is live as the name. And you see it created all three files. So I actually, in 20 minutes or less than 20 minutes, I implemented a generator uploaded it to GitHub and I used it live. So I hope this shows you how easy it can be. Obviously the logic wasn't too complex that it's only creating three simple files, but I hope that was uh, at least a successful demo that everyone was uh, able to follow and to inspire you to do it yourself. Okay, I stopped the slide share. Let's go back to the slides and finish up this presentation. In the So as I said, it's all on open source. It's all on GitHub on different repos, but all on GitHub. So if you have questions about the EC UI5 shell, if you have questions about the UI5 project or any other generator, start a discussion by opening uh, an issue or a pull request if you find a mistake. And hopefully we won't have to get out the lighter fluid then. And here are a few slide uh, links. As I said, the slides will be shared with you. And with that, that was the end of my presentation. I hope you were able to enjoy this. I hope you uh, got to know more about ECUI 5. Maybe you didn't know ECUI 5 at all before. Maybe you haven't even used it. If you haven't used it, use these commands here to install it. And with that, I would say I'm ready for questions. Great, Marius. One tool to rule them all, one ring to rule them all one generator to rule them all. So there were questions and um, the most prevalent one is, can we use private plugins as NPM packages from private NPM repositories? A very good question. Let me think about it. I mean, you can always uh, basically make a private package and execute it locally directly via human. That would work. Another thing that is currently not possible is that if you have a private package on the GitHub organization, you can supply your GitHub token with ECUI5 and it will be able to read this private uh, repository from GitHub based on the token. Now we could say uh, that if your repository is private, not in the SAP GitHub, uh, SAP UI5 org, UI5 community org, but in a different organization that you also pass in the name of the organization and the token, 
then that would be possible as well, but it would require a small pull request for the ECUI5 generator, but it shouldn't be hard to do that. But it's all on GitHub, so it's not a private NPM package or so, a private NPM registry. Excellent. Um, then there is another one, um, the well-known Fiori tools also include um, a generator. The Fiori tools um, are available in Business Application Studio and also um, as a plugin for Visual Studio Code. Now, where would you see how easy UI5 and the generator from Fiori tools can either come together or how do they differentiate? That's a good question and uh, thanks for the reminder. So I forgot to mention that in the presentation, you're right, there is this alternative or we could say ECUI5 is the alternative to the Fiori tools that also come with generators and that but they are way bigger so they obviously have everything uh, tools around that you use after the project has been generated for example to modify uh, OData services to add a different pages to Fiori elements apps to and also when you use their generator it actually comes with features like a, a VR elements or freestyle or list report application, flex column layout. So they are uh, way bigger, obviously, because an entire team works on them and it's uh, not open source, at least not currently. But that's a strong, uh, I would say that's an advantage and a disadvantage. So easy UI5 is open source. Everyone can see the source code, everyone can contribute, but there's no service level agreement from SAP that it always works. So if you want to have a generator that works, that you can guarantee that it works, the Fiori tools are probably what you want to use. If you say you're okay with what ECUI 5 offers, then uh, ECUI 5 is the right option. But I know the guys from Fiori tools and the girls, and they know me, so we work together and obviously we try to avoid double work wherever possible. No, wouldn't that be great if we'd finally have that one UI5 scaffolding tool?